Hi cozy family, hi cozy friends. If you don't know me, I'm Kennedy and I make videos on all things cozy. To me, that's self-care, organization, gaming, many, many things. But today I'm finally doing my first organization video. And what better first organization video to have than Notion? I got a lot of requests to do this video, but I also was planning on doing this video from the moment I started my channel because I love Notion so much. It is literally a part of my everyday routine. I had heard a little bit about it before this year and I was just kind of like, another organization app. I have a bunch, I don't need any more. I use Google Keep, it's fine, but you don't understand. <laughs> and if you do, you do. But if you haven't used Notion, please, please, please give it a shot because it is like every single organization, application, website, whatever, put into one plus other things. My entire life is on Notion now. <laughs> it is just a lifesaver. So the first point I wanna talk about in this video is why I love Notion and why I use it for everything. I was somebody who tried every single organization, productivity, habit tracking, budget, app, there was. I tried everything and nothing quite compares to having Notion, which is like a combination of all of those things. I think a lot of the productivity YouTubers and a lot of what is just trying to be sold to us generally is a multitude of things. Like you need 10 things to cover every aspect of your life. You know, you need an app for this, you need an app for this, you need an app for this, and you should be doing this manually and you should be writing this out. And we don't need all of that. That's stressful. That causes me more stress to know I have everything written down, but it's just in 10 different places, or know that I have everything written down here, but I have to keep track of things here for some reason. Notion makes it simple. Notion makes it so that all of those things are in one place and it's organized in a way that makes sense to you. And I love that about it. The only thing I don't have in Notion is my Google Calendar. And I think that's because I get so many um, events and things sent to me or like meetings through Google. And so I like having the calendar there. There are calendars on Notion, but it, to me it seems a little bit more like a wall calendar type, if that makes sense. So before my life was 10 million different apps and now it's Google Calendar and it's Notion. And it's really seamless to kind of just have the two up and switch between the two whenever I need to. And also I talked about this a little bit in my head to toe self care video, but just having a space where you know where everything is and having kind of your brain dumped into this one singular place and like anything important in this one place is such a weight off your shoulders and it clears your mind in a way that I haven't felt before, it's just pure bliss. <laughs> and like the second you have a thought, if you have a place to just put it down in Notion really quickly and then organize it later, lowering and eliminating the amount of steps between your thoughts and having it down somewhere is a game changer. So next I'm gonna talk about the basic functions of Notion and kind of its layout. And throughout the rest of the video, I'll be sharing my screen and what I'm looking at so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so just to explain how Notion works, I like to think of each page as a table of contents for any page you have under that page. So if you see here, I have my personal page and when I click on it, it has on it every single page that I have under it. So it has town square to do, routines, journals, creativity, home reference, because that's what I have nested under personal. And so whenever you put a new page within your personal tab, it's gonna show up on this personal page. So even though I don't click on this personal page ever, I just go straight to the pages because this is really just a nesting title almost but since it is a page in and of itself i just like to create a little organization to it so i have the things i do daily and the things that i need daily and the things that are kind of in the background of my personal life so that's how the nesting element works so how you probably would want to start if you're not using a template or if you're just adding something to a template that you find is creating from here a new page and that would create your overall category. So if you want to create a personal page, a school page, a work page, that's where you would go. So click, you would click add a page. Now you want to add something under personal. You want to add your own town score, your own to do. You click on either add a page here and it'll add a sub page or you can go here and you can type 
forward slash and you can just add a page. Forward slash on Notion, I like to think of like a little pop-up menu. Whenever you do forward slash, all of your options come up of what you would like to add to this one section. So you can add just text, you can add a whole page, you can add a little checkbox. There's endless options, headings, bulleted lists, call outs, which look like this, and you can type something. There's many things, and I'll, I'll talk more about the useful ones later, but I just wanna show you that this is where your like main menu is. Whenever you want to add something to a page, you click forward slash. If you wanna add something to this personal page, say this is gonna be your town square, you wanna go here all the time, you can just add little things here, you can add dividers, you can add headings, just some quick usability notes. You can highlight a whole section and you can move it around like that. When you click here on any line that you have, you can change the color of the text, you can change the color of the background, you can turn it into a page itself, um, you can turn it into another element. So there's a lot of flexibility in terms of like, after you create something, you can customize it, you can make it something else, which is really nice. So say you wanna create a shopping list page and you want this to be directly under your personal tab. Let's do create a page and you would do shopping list. Next, this is the kind of complicated part and I think this is where Notion loses some people in the beginning. You can just have a page, you know, this is my shopping list. I just want my shopping list to have a heading, veggies and how much but bananas, cucumbers, and bell peppers, and that's your list. That's one option with Notion, and that's great because it's simple and that's all you need. The other thing that Notion has, which is kind of the confusing part, is that you can create databases, and the databases are the most helpful aspects of Notion, in my opinion. Here are the database options. You have a table, which is essentially like a mini Excel sheet. I love it for anything you have to keep track of. So habits, um, budgets, shopping lists, book lists, game lists, and there's so much flexibility. And I'll show you how in a moment, but tables are the best. A board looks like this, and, and I think its purpose is, yeah, like it says, not started, in progress completed, and you can move it over to the board where you need it to be. So say this is your inbox, you don't know what it is yet, you just create it, and then you can move it over to not started and progress completed. I like to use these for routines. So I like to label these as like morning, afternoon, night, and use that for routines. I don't use this as often as I do the other ones though. List, which is also great for reading lists, movie lists, anything like that. It just doesn't have as much like organization as the table does. I really only use tables for my journals um, because I just like having a complete list of them and sorting it by date. And I don't really like to have any other information or anything on it that I would need to see like with a table maybe. So that's where I use um, lists calendar which is self-explanatory it's just a calendar and the next one is timeline which i never really use this but it's great for like planning out a day maybe um, like time blocking which again i use google calendar for that just because it's integrated with everything that i'm doing already um, but if you love time blocking definitely do that or maybe you can use this for deadlines things like that and you can sort it by like year, quarter, month. So if, if that's how you like to view things, then that's perfect. So those are all the databases that you can put into a page. You can also just create a database as its own page. And when you do that, you can't add anything else to the page. So say we go back to personal and we go, this is, this is the page we were just on where we were adding all the databases. So say you wanna have multiple databases on a page, you would wanna create a page, and then once you're on it, create inline. See there's inline and then there's full page. You would wanna create inline if you want a bunch of different things on that page. If you only want that page to be a database, you would just do slash and you would do table full page. So then this page is only a table and if you click around, you can't add anything else to this. It's just gonna be this table as a database and that's it. The next important thing is 
linking databases. So my town square, if you look on the drop down menu, is solely linked databases. See the little arrow? That means that it's just a link to a database that's located somewhere else. So that's what my town square is besides um, besides the weekly map and the quick to do and the little pictures and my vision board that I have on here. Everything else is a linked database. So I have my daily routine linked and I just have that added. The two ways you can link a database are just mentioning it or you can fully link it and integrate it into the page. And choosing the difference just depends on whether you actually want to see what that database is on your page or if you just want to mention it so that you can click on it. So my daily routines, I didn't want to see the whole entire daily routine on this page because it would take up too much space. So I just mentioned it so that I can quickly click on it and then it brings up my daily routine on the page that it's actually located, which is in, if you look to the left, it's in routines it's in daily routines. So that's where it actually is located. So if I wanted to just go click on routines and click on daily routines, I could do that, but I like having it mentioned in my town square so that it's easier to get to since I'm always on my town square. And actually linking the database, you do by, again, forward slash is your go-to menu, and you go to create linked database, which is right under all the databases. So once you do that, a little search bar will pop up. You'll type in the name of the database that you want to show up and it'll sh show up. So like, okay, let's type in March. Okay, so we have March packages that show up. So I would click March packages and my whole table would show up here. And my favorite thing to do on Town Square is to create a filter so that only the packages that are set to come that day show up on my Town Square so that I don't have the entire database of all of the packages that are coming from March because Again, I want my town square to be short and sweet and just see what's relevant for that day. A note about linking databases is wherever you have labeled the actual database, you want it to be a unique title so that you can actually find it in the search later. So say you have a page of all of your budgets for the month or your spending trackers, right? You don't wanna just label it tracker because if you type in tracker into the search when you're trying to link the database, all of your trackers are gonna, all of your things labeled tracker are gonna show up. You would wanna label it February tracker 2021 so that as soon as you type in February tracker, it's easy, it shows up and you know that's the right one. So that is how linked databases work and that's probably my favorite part of Notion because just having a page like this that has little snippets of all of the important things I have in other areas of my Notion, just in this one place, is so, so helpful. And if you'd like to add little pictures like this, I go on Giphy, I look up stickers, I just type in a search term, click on stickers, and then I just save it to my computer, I drag it over, and you can scale the size however you want it. And I do the same thing for these little icons. So every page you can have a little icon and you can have a background. So next I'm gonna show you how tables work because I think that's one of the more complicated but more useful databases. And it's also a good tutorial kind of of how the filtering and sorting aspects work. I, I usually like to have a table view and a gallery view for things like book lists because it's nice to be able to look at it like just maybe just the photo of the book or maybe just the title of the book. Here's the table, but you can add or take away as many properties as you'd like. So I've added author, genre, status, the link, um, why I wanna read it, if I own it or not, what I own it on, how many pages, if I've done book notes on it. So I'll show you the different properties you can have on a table. You can have text, you can have a number, you can select one tag from a list of tags, you can select multiple tags from a list of tags, you can put a date. Oh, okay, so person is if you have a team and you can like maybe assign a person to something on the table. Um, file, self-explanatory, checkbox is a checkbox, URL is a URL, <laughs> email and phone, all, um, all self-explanatory. Here's something that I have not figured out. <laughs> if you are a computer person or if you wanna do some more research on Reddit, having formulas in your table is really really cool i just don't know how to use it there's a lot of templates that have formulas already built into it so you can just benefit from the formula working they're really good for budget so you can see like if i've gone over something on this month then i need to set a reminder over here they're just really complicated and really really cool but i just don't have any yet so those are all the types of properties you can add i'll explain the ones on my book list a little bit priority i have high medium low someday and then you can sort it 
um, and you can create multiple sorts. Whatever the sorting order you have, it's gonna sort by obviously the highest first and then the next one, it's gonna sort within that sorting framework next and onwards. Another feature of tables that is really, really helpful is that you can add table views. So you can see that I have a table view for to buy, owned, to read, read. So say if I click owned, all of the books that I actually own will show up. And that's because I have a filter set where owned is checked. Another way that I use it, which is a lot more simple, is for my habit tracker. So I have it set to sort by date, and I only have this set to show this week of habits. And then I have the habit named here, and I just have a bunch of check boxes, and I just check them horizontally. <laughs> Tables are just mwah. So another aspect of Notion that's really cool is you can create templates. Quick note on the distinction between template tools versus Notion page templates. Template tools are like the template button and the database templates. Those are tools you use within Notion, and that's the first one I'll talk about. And then there's Notion page templates, which are either Notion or community made, and that's for an entire page. So that's the second one I'll talk about. So one example is here on my grocery list. I have a template set to create a new grocery list anytime I want to go to the grocery store. So if I press new grocery list, a entire list comes up of all the things I normally get. So all of the produce, veggies, whatever, whatever. And then as soon as I'm done with it, I just highlight it and I delete it. Because guess what? I can just do a new one next time. So a couple ways you can create this, I just look up template. So forward slash, I typed in template and click on template and it creates a little template button. So that's what this is, it's a template button. And what should the button be called? So I have this one called new grocery list. So you want it to be whatever makes sense for what you're adding. So if you're adding new grocery list, do that. If you're adding a new to do, you can do that. And so what this button is set to do right now is just add a new checkbox. So you can have this under a heading that says like to do's for the day. Say I do that, I have the heading to do and add a new to-do adds a checkbox. Add a new to-do, it adds a checkbox. And so that's what that template button is set to do. But you can have the template button be whatever you want it to be. You can have the template button be a database. You can have the template button literally be whatever you want it to be. You just insert it into this section and you call it whatever you want. And that button will pull up that entire thing. It could be pages and pages of stuff. It will create that template for you. So that is amazing. But also there's like page templates you can create, which are great for journals. If you have a gratitude journal, say, who are you grateful for? What are you grateful for? You wanna have those headings on your gratitude journal every single day, but you don't wanna type them out. So you create the gratitude template. On the specific table that has all your gratitude journal entries, you would create a new template and you would just create something that looks like this. So I'm grateful for because I can, I can appreciate this more by, so that every single time, you want to create a new entry, all you have to do is go to new and click gratitude template. And that's specific to this table. So if you wanted to create a gratitude journal template on another table for some reason, you would have to recreate that template or you could copy it over from this template. So those are templates, they're amazing. And the last thing I wanna talk about in the tutorial section is templates. So templates is definitely a think smarter, not harder thing. I don't think I could have done all of this without having a template. And my template is from Michelle B, who is a productivity YouTuber that I love and I've watched her for years. Her video on Notion was the first video on Notion that I saw and I was just like, I'm getting it, I'm getting her template. I think that templates are a great tool for learning Notion. Um, because you can kind of see how everything works based on how that person has things set up and their link to databases and their mentioned databases and things like that. I'm gonna link mine for free and please use that to learn Notion. I don't think you need to buy one. But if you'd like, hers is amazing. So definitely, <laughs> definitely check her out. So I will not be including any of the pages that are from Michelle B's template. I just wanna respect her and her work that she's put in. Aside from ones you can find on Reddit, like if you just look up something you want a template for. Like, I want a budget template that does this. Put Reddit after on Google and I promise you something will show up. Notion also has their own templates down here. 
and you can search them. A lot of them are Notion made, but people can also list their own templates on Notion. So if you browse more templates, you can find a bunch, a bunch of templates that people have made. So the next section is me showing you my entire setup and how I like to organize things. I'm gonna start with my favorite pages. The first is Quick Notes. So if I close all of my pages, Quick notes is on top of everything because like I talked about, if I have an idea, I want somewhere to put it immediately. I don't wanna to have to sort through things and open pages to find the exact place to put it. I wanna put it down as quickly as possible and then when I have the time, I can get back to it and put it in the right place or delete it because it's just a quick to do or something like that. And I usually use this for like, if somebody gives me a book recommendation, a show recommendation, if I think of something that I need to add to my grocery list, I'll just put it in here. I'll know what it's about <laughs> and then I can add it later. And my next favorite page is Town Square, which is a good transition to my personal section. The first in my personal section, it's where I spend basically all of my time on Notion. And I love moving this around. If I didn't do it that day, I just put it on the next day. Sometimes I use the quick to do if I have something to do, but I don't know which day I can do it yet. So I'll put it in these sections that personal home, school, work, social media. I'll put it there and then I could just drag it over to the day that I can do it once I figure out when I can do it. The things I have linked here are my habit tracker, my daily routine, my monthly budget so that I can be updating that as often as possible, my projects, my packages, and my master to-do list. Okay, so then moving on to my to-do page. I have so many things in this page, but the first one is my master to-do list. And again, this is Michelle B's idea, but it's essentially to have a to-do list for literally every single thing in your life. So we have our to-dos for the week, you know, that we have to do, but we also have to-dos for like life, for our month, for our year, that we just aren't gonna get to each, every single day or every week. And it's just something that kind of isn't high priority maybe, or just something that's like looming in the back of our minds that we have to do eventually. That's where master to-do list comes in. Having to-dos where you think about it and you go, oh my God, I haven't made my doctor's appointment or oh my God, just I'm staring at this cabinet that's dirty and has to be organized and I have to do it at some point. Just having a place to put that so that you don't have those moments where you like wake up at night in a sweat thinking about it is so nice. You could just put it all here. You know it's here and you know you can go here to find all of the possible to-dos you possibly have <laughs> and that's just a weight off your shoulders and it allows you to kind of actually get to it, which is probably the more important thing. <laughs> so I have this moderate priority, low priority, high priority and in the high priority ones I have showing on my, on my town square. That's the master to-do list. I love it. Thank you, Michelle, because ooh, saved my life. Money and budgets. And then I track my subscriptions. So yeah, I have it if it's monthly, yearly, quarterly. And then I have the yearly cost there so that I can just have a total of how much I'm spending on subscriptions. Um, and then I have over here like a savings plan and overview, investment overview, retirement plan and overview. I don't have any plans right now. So these are empty pages. But as soon as I start working, hopefully I will be able to use that. I have an accounts here and how much I have in each. So I can just quickly look at that. Here I have my shopping and grocery list, which you saw a little bit when I was describing templates. I have the new grocery button that brings up all the things that I typically buy. And then I have the additional items here that I just think of that aren't typically on my list. So here I have a linked database to my go-to home items, which is actually in my references section. And I have it linked here because whenever an item on that is checked, in need, it will show up here. And it also has to have the in-store tag. And I have the same settings for my go-to personal products. And then I have my online shopping list. Similar to my grocery in-store list, I have my go-to personal products and go-to home products on here. And I have it set to show only the items that I need and I have it set for the items that are online. Then I have a journals page and I won't click on them, but I have a daily journal, I have monthly timelines. And this is an idea I got from Ali Abdal, who is a really inspirational YouTuber who um, makes videos on productivity and things like that. But he makes note of all of the things that happen throughout the month, just so that you can remember, you can look back and have, that, have those memories. I think that's a really nice idea because then you can make a yearly one and go back and kind of pick and choose out of monthly ones 
what parts of the year were your favorite and things like that. And then I have my reference page, which is, this is vital. So I have all of my life stuff and then I have all of my <laughs> real stuff. So life stuff, I have an about me section. <laughs> Which sounds odd, but sometimes you like forget things about yourself. Like someone will ask you like, what are your hobbies? Like what's your favorite book? And you'll be like, um, I don't know. So I have literally like everything. I have my body measurements. I have um, like cat names I like. I have crazy stories that have happened to me and pet peeves, wines I like. And then just a page of like my family members, like literally anything anyone would need to know about me I have here. And then I have one for all of my favorite people. And that's just so that, again, like, have you ever been like, oh my God, what is my boyfriend's cousin's name again? Whenever I am reminded of it, I'll put it down so that I have it. So if I ever need to think of it again, it's there. I have their birthdays. I have their favorite foods, their favorite artists, things like that. It's just like nice to remember about your favorite people. Then I have a gift ideas section, which is just all the gift ideas I have for friends and family. And I have a couple things from Michelle B's template, which I won't be including. She's like people I admire. So anyone from any like a show or real life that you admire and you keep track of it and you keep track of why you admire them. It's really nice because it kind of like, it helps to remind you what kind of person that you would like to be. And I think that's nice. Life notes, I, I turn this into a different thing than what Michelle had. So I will include this, but for me, this is things that people have said to me in life and I want to remember them because they're really sweet. Like I just had somebody say, this is a weird thing to say to somebody, but you have a really great energy. And I thought that was so sweet. And I feel like you often just forget little random compliments like that. And so I wanted, I put it down. I put down where it was said, who said it, stranger. <laughs> it's nice. It's just nice to like come back to something and be like, that was really nice. Then I have important info. And this is just where I have anything that is vital information. So like backup blogging codes that they give you and you're like, what do I do with this? Wi-Fi codes, like all that random stuff, uh, like pictures of like a lockbox code, pictures of my car, like VIN number, ever, anything I wanna reference, I put here. When I click on school, I actually kind of made this page useful. So I have my weekly map and then I have my class schedule here and my classes hub here. I have resources for the school. Anything that's on my master to-do list that's tagged as school, I have here. So the page that I use the most on this is classes hub. So here I have an inline table database where I have all of the classes tagged. Um, the type of note it is. So is it a class note? Is it an assignment? Is it a recap email that the teacher sends? It's sorted by date and I have it only showing I think the past month. And then I have the readings that I should be doing each day and then I have the assignment due dates on this calendar. This is the only time I use this calendar. I have the assignments on my Google Calendar too. I have a little study playlist. A lot of you might know that I listen to <laughs> the Stardew Valley soundtrack to study. I have a page for each of my classes and then I have this in a gallery inline database just because it's easier to view. I have the Zoom link right here so this is immediately where I go. Whenever a class is starting, I go to the page, I click on the Zoom link, it's easy. And then I have the notes only for this class up. And then I have projects and assignments. And if you remember the template button, I have a template button that brings up a new assignment if a, they assign a new one. It's just this exact thing duplicated. I have all the info, so the days of the week, the time, professor, what the grading is, the unit, the dates. I have the professor's info, email, office hours. I have the syllabus link. And then I have assignment due dates again um, on here, but just for this class. So I have that for every class. I love using this for classes. I'm so so sad that I had not had this before for classes. It's amazing. And I'm sure you can like think of all the amazing ways you can create unique and helpful class notes. I just kind of type and do bullet notes, but I'm sure you can come up with some really cool things for class notes. And yeah, that is my entire Notion. This is a really long video. Thank you for sticking in there if you did. I'll have the full Notion template linked, which has all of my pages and the nested pages, completely clear of my personal stuff. So you can just creating on your own. If this is your first time using Notion and you download this template, give yourself like a good 
solid weekend. It took me like four to five straight days during my winter break to do this. And it was fun for me because I love doing it, but don't make the mistake of thinking this is gonna be a quick thing because it'll probably take a really long time if you're copying your entire life to a program. So give yourself a weekend to do it, maybe longer. Yeah, happy organizing. And if you wanna see any other organization videos from me, let me know. If you have any Notion ideas that I didn't mention, let me know in the comments because I am always looking for cool new ideas. And yeah, see you next time, cozy friends and family. Stay cozy. Bye. Bye.